and welcome to Blythe Way Business News. Today we're joined by the team from Beowulf Mining. Beowulf is listed in the London market on AIM, also on the Spotlight market. And I suppose they're, they're traditionally known for their assets, their iron ore assets in Sweden, but the company's also got graphite in Finland and is exploring for gold and copper in the Balkans. But today I think the focus is gonna be back on the heartland of Sweden. I'm joined by the chief executive, Kurt Budge, but also by the newly appointed chairman, Sven Otto Litterin. Sven Otto, if I can come to you first, please. Um, you recently joined Beowulf. Tell us a little bit about your background, please, and why you were interested in joining the company. Absolutely, nice to be here. Uh, well, my background is a mix of business and politics. Um, I was Sweden's Minister for Employment for four years and uh, about 10 years ago. Uh, and then I've been working on labor market reforms uh, in Saudi Arabia mostly in the last uh, two or three years. Uh, and I've always had a, um, uh, an, a, an engagement, if you like, for issues that has to do with um, the, the manufacturing industry, for creating jobs, uh, obviously, and for parts of the country where this is really badly needed. So for me, it was a great opportunity to be able to do something in practice uh, to, to, to help out. So I'm, I'm very happy to have joined and it's an exciting time because I think uh, things are, are, try, are starting to move a bit. Uh, we've had uh, a, a very interesting uh, couple of weeks behind us where the government uh, in Sweden, uh, the ministry was uh, uh, criticized by the constitutional committee uh, for not having um, made any sort of progress in this uh, area for a, a long time and for not even having uh, spoken to the company. So, so things are moving ahead quite a bit. So with your background in, in government, government organizations, ministries, um, clearly you've now moved into the world of commerce. So what is your perspective on Beowulf mining uh, and its contribution and its potential, hopefully even greater contribution to the Swedish mining industry? Well, I think it's a golden opportunity right now. Um, we have a very nice finding up in Kalak. Um, we have now a situation where the government was unanimously criticized by the Constitutional Committee. And I think that the government now is careful not to be criticized again. Uh, at the same time, I mean, this is a part of the country where jobs and growth are badly needed. So we can now join hands with the local community, we can work on our strategy of sustainable mining, and we can set up everything so that we are ready when the government finally comes to its decision. Um, and I think that it's, it's quite important to see that, I mean, we are a, a young and fairly small company, um, but, and that also means, of course, that we are not stuck in old uh, uh, investments. So we can, we can do it afresh. We can start off by looking at how can we contribute to um, uh, a sustainable mining? Uh, how can we make sure that we are um, building a local hub for sustainable mining in Jokmok? And uh, how do we connect the dots between you know, all interested parties that would be uh, great to have on board? There are lots of innovations and there are lots of of research going on and we can connect the dots in Jokmok. And that I think is a huge, not only challenge, but also a fantastic opportunity for us and for Jokmok, to be honest, and that part of the country. So, so lots of potential for benefit in the, the community. I, I guess lots of benefit for the, for the national government as well. Kurt, can you give us an update where we are at, with the Calac project, the, the iron ore project at Calac? Yes, as Sven Otto said that the Constitutional Committee um, handed down its judgment on the way the government's handled our application a few weeks ago. And uh, recently, the government has also sought to consult with UNESCO again on the world heritage status of Laponia um, and the interaction, the indirect effects of CALAC. The, these are issues that have been discussed and uh, studied before back in 2016, 17. So really, as I've said all along, company's done the work. Uh, and we will be putting uh, a statement into the government to, to help UNESCO uh, quickly uh, conduct a further review just that it can reach the same conclusions that we do. 
that uh, a mine that at its closest point is 38 kilometers away is really not going to have any significant effect on the world heritage status of Laponia. Um, so that's where we are at the moment. So what we have is both um, the Constitutional Committee sort of um, pressing the government to, to take action and to, to do something with our application. We have the government that is seeking the, the uh, Council of UNESCO. Um, <clears throat> we're saying that, you know, the UNESCO, uh, all the information that we've prepared is sufficient to, for UNESCO to reach a quick conclusion that, uh, that would be apparent to any reasonable um, assessor that Calic is not going to have an impact on the world heritage status of Laponia. Now, okay, it looks like we're getting to a position now where we're getting decisions which hopefully will go in the company's favour. If they do in Sweden, what's the potential look like? And, and also, what's the importance of your, your foundation uh, in Sweden? Oh, I think um, I've never underestimated uh, the opportunity of building a strong foundation for the company in Sweden. Um, Sweden is a world leader in mining. It's a world leader in sustainable mining, um, in, in innovations. And, and we can really benefit from that in the development of Kalak, but also in the development of our other business areas. I mean, we're, we're very lucky to be in Sweden and Finland. Both of them are leading mining nations. And we can export that knowledge and that forward thinking to, to our work that we're doing in Kosovo. I mean, most recently, uh, yesterday, we announced that uh, the rights issue that we've just concluded in Sweden was oversubscribed by 131%. So our listing in Sweden really is, is giving us uh, financial muscle to be able to invest in all our business areas. And as, as we've been saying through this capital pr raising process, we have activity taking place in all of our business areas. Things are happening with regards to Calac and uh, the potential for a forthcoming decision. We've got activity happening with uh, Fenniscandian Resources, our graphite business in Finland. Um, the battery space in, is, is a very exciting place to be at the moment. Um, I saw a headline this week that uh, you know, the demand for battery raw materials is going to outstrip supply. And we have this tension between Europe and the Nordics wanting to build strategic capability in manufacturing batteries and the way new mines are permitted and the timelines for permitting new mines. We as a company don't want to cut corners, but what we certainly want to do is to work in close cooperation with authorities to make sure that all the boxes are checked, that stakeholders have confidence that we've developed the highest quality projects, but that we can get those deliver, uh, built and producing in time to meet the market demand. Sven Otto, I mean, you, you joined the company in November. It almost seems uh, silly to ask you a question about potential. You wouldn't have joined if you hadn't seen potential in Beowulf, but in a nutshell, what, what is it which excites you about the potential of Beowulf? Well, I think we're in a situation right now where a decision by the government is fairly close. I mean, the company has delivered on everything that it has been supposed to deliver on. Uh, and, and when this constitutional committee uh, finalized its, its verdict, basically, it, it, it was so clear that the government has not treated the company the way they should. And they know their, their lesson now. I'm, I'm fairly sure of that. So something will happen uh, in the fairly near future, at least. So, and, and I would be so happy when that happens, because that means that we can start actually doing what the business is supposed to do, and we can start producing, and we can start, you know, being a part of building the local community up there in a part of the country where it's actually really needed. You need jobs up there. You need growth. You need taxpayers rather than, than something else. So it's a, it's a fantastic opportunity, I think, to be a part of that and to build something. So I'm, I'm really happy about this, and I think the timing is now quite, quite exciting, to be honest. So I'm, I'm all for it. Well, I would hope that you were, so that's good to hear. Um, finally, gentlemen, look, the world is moving towards a greener e economy. Um, we're talking regularly these days about the extraction of battery metals. Um, Beowulf, I suppose, had its heritage in iron ore, but you, uh, you've diversified into other things. But how does Beowulf fit into this new greener economy? Can I come to you first, Kurt, on that? Then I'll come back to Sven Otto. How does Beowulf fit into the new greener economy of modern mining? 
Well, I think we've benefited from, again, our location in Sweden, being able to access renewable power and to do, develop fossil-free operations. That's our ambition. That's always been our ambition for Calac, is to have an electrified mine um, or using the non-fossil uh, fuels to, to power uh, plant and equipment. Um, that's perfectly achievable in Sweden. Um, and with magnetite and magnetite concentrate going into the steelmaking process, you know, steel making is moving to a fossil free uh, steel manufacturing process. It's also looking for high quality feed inputs. And if you can generate a concentrate that's over 71% or 71.5% iron content and clean as a whistle, then uh, you're supporting both um, high quality steel making. Uh, and also, let's not forget that magnetite is exothermic in the steel making process. So it actually saves you energy. And then with our graphite business in Finland, I mean, you need graphite, natural flake graphite for anode material to go into lithium ion batteries. So again, it's a very nicely positioned business. Um, I mean, people don't often think that uh, steel in itself um, is, is, is part of the green transition and part of the green economy, but some of the commentary that's taking place at the moment that's um, talking about the stronger for longer iron prices are talking about, you know, the move to a, a, an economy that is um, taking environmental uh, and climate emergency very much into consideration and that demands steel and it demands graphite. So our two businesses in Sweden and Finland are very nicely positioned. And then with Kosovo, it's a potential uh, new source of supply for Europe for the future. Yeah. So, over to you. Yeah, thank you. Well, I'm, I'm looking at, um, you know, Northvolt is the world's uh, second largest battery factory that is now being built about 200 kilometers from, from Kalak in Skellefteå. And I look at how they are operating and what they're doing in terms of engaging the research community. They're building in Skellefteå um, a research and innovation hub for the battery industry. And I think this is quite interesting for us to learn from and perhaps also copy from. I mean, how do they do it? How do they uh, work with, with the research community, uh, other businesses in other areas? And that's quite an inspiration for us to see that we can do something similar in the mining industry. Uh, I think there are lots of innovation uh, going on in this area. And there's also a pressure from potential clients to become more sustainable, to be a part of the circular economy. And of course we should be there when their clients are there and all the others are there. Uh, we should be leading that in terms of, of the mining industry or be a, a, a leader in that part of, of, uh, of the industry. And I'm sure we have the capacity and the possibilities to do that. So I'm, I'm quite confident that that's going to happen and I'm quite happy to be a part of it. Well, gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. Uh, please come back in the future and tell us about the developments in Sweden, hopefully with some, some government approvals to take you further towards production, but also in Finland and in the Balkans. That was uh, Sven Otto Litterin and Kurt Budge, the chairman and chief executive of Beowulf. As I said at the start of the programme, Beowulf Mining is listed both on the AIM market in London and also on the Spotlight Exchange in Sweden. Currently a market capitalization of around 26 million pounds. That's it from Blydeway Business News. Thank you for watching.